हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट एस कंटिन्यू टैक्सेस इन इंडिया इन दिस वीडियो ऑल्सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वी हैव सीन अबाउट डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस इन इंडिया ओके वॉट आर द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस देन डिफरेंट टैक्सेशन सिस्टम्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस थ्री वीडियोज ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक now in this video let us discuss uh, the indirect taxes that are in india i have already explained to you the meaning of indirect taxes in the previous videos here we will uh, learn about uh, the different kinds of indirect taxes so let us begin the first indirect tax is the customs tax okay it is also known as custom duty also known as custom duty so it is basically on goods which are imported to india so the goods which we buy from outside india which we buy from abroad okay import means what import means import ka matlab hota hai to buy things from abroad meaning different countries another country so goods which are imported to india on that we pay the custom duty it is known as import duties sometimes it is also imposed on exports exports is goods sold from india okay these are exports so custom duty is basically both import duty and export duty but export duties are very less they are a very few in number so most of the custom duties are import duties only in our country okay so there are very less export duties it also includes the anti dumping duty auction of gold confiscated items right so what is anti dumping duty let me uh, let me explain to you anti dumping duty basically is a duty which is imposed on imported goods okay again on imported goods in order in order to save domestic industries now how does this happen okay how does this happen see dumping means dumping means to dump meaning to throw things at a very cheap cost so for example there are countries like china and like many different countries who will give a lot of subsidies to their countries to to, to their uh, industries to their factories because of that their production cost are very low and they can sell their products at a very very cheap rate in other countries and because of that what happens the same goods which are produced in our domestic economy by the domestic industries they are not competitive because their prices are high their manufacturing cost is high and therefore the domestic industries suffer because of that because all the goods that we see are from china or like countries which have lot of subsidies given to their local industries and therefore in order to compensate for such cheap goods for such subsidies which are provided by those countries our country imposes an additional duty additional tax on such commodities so that the prices become high in our domestic market for example if p i is the import price which is a very low price okay then there is a anti dumping duty which is known as td so anti dumping duty is imposed and therefore this combined price is somehow you know higher than the price which would be without the anti dumping duty so this is how the anti dumping duty works then auction of gold then many a times you know there are uh, you know gold which is smuggled into our country by different means so they also auction it so that also becomes a part of the custom duties and confiscated items many times some items are banned in our country imports are banned they are confiscated okay there are some items of which the proper records are not maintained bills are not maintained so those items are confiscated by the government by the customs department and then they are auctioned so all these form part of the custom duties in the annual financial statement of our country then the next type of indirect tax is the union excise duty okay excise of union union means central government excise duty i will explain to you what does it mean excise duty means it is a duty it is a tax which is imposed on manufacturing it is paid by the manufacturer and it is per unit of production so basically if the manufacturer is there okay say he is manufacturing tv tv sets so he will pay excise duty he will pay excise duty on number of units produced 
सो दिस ड्यूटी इज नॉट अ फिक्स ड्यूटी ऑन वन मैन्युफैक्चर इट इज इट विल डिपेंड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ यूनिट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन ही प्रोड्यूसेज टेन थाउजेंड टी वी सेट्स सो ही विल पे द एक्साइज ड्यूटी फॉर टेन थाउजेंड टी वी सेट्स इफ इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू हिज प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज एंड बिकम फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड टी वी सेट्स देन ही विल पे द एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड टी वी सेट्स सो इट इज नॉट अ फ्लैट ड्यूटी ऑन वन पर्टिकुलर फैक्ट्री और वन पर्टिकुलर मैनुफैक्चर इट इज इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन द नंबर ऑफ यूनिट्स दैट ही प्रोड्यूसेज सो इट इज अ टैक्स ऑन मैनुफैक्चरिंग एंड इट इज पर यूनिट ऑफ गुड्स प्रोड्यूस दिस टू थिंग्स यू हैव टू कीप इन माइंड हियर हाउएवर नाउ दिस इंडस्ट्रीज नाउ वंस दिस मैनुफैक्चर विल पे द एक्साइज ड्यूटी ऑन देयर प्रोडक्शन ऑन ऑन देयर गुड्स they will recover it from the consumer right they will not uh, bear this uh, tax burden so the tax burden is transfer is shifted to the consumers so we see this na mrp maximum retail price inclusive of all taxes inclusive of all taxes so this taxes is basically excise duties or other duties also which is paid by the manufacturer at the time of manufacturing but ultimately it is recovered from the consumers consumers will pay this the price that the consumer will pay also includes this uh, excise duties so this is known as shifting of tax burden this is known as shifting of tax burden we have seen this in direct tax and indirect tax we have already seen this that in direct tax the tax burden cannot be shifted but in indirect tax the tax burden is shifted from one person to the other so basically the ultimate the final consumer will pay this tax will bear the burden of this tax now excise duty is paid by the manufacturer regardless of whether he sells this product in the domestic market or it is exported to the foreign countries so whether he sells this goods in our own india only or whether he sells this goods in america usa europe or anywhere in the world he has to pay the excise duty okay this is a simple concept it is a uh, tax on manufacturing and it is per unit of production this you have to keep in mind now let us look at the third kind of indirect tax which is known as value added tax it is very important vat okay vat is what vat is the value added tax basically i just want to explain to you what is the meaning of value added tax but uh, you know it has already been subsumed under the gst which we will study in the following lectures हम लोग जी एस टी को बहुत डीप में अच्छे से पढ़ेंगे विल स्टडी इन डिटेल जी एस टी बट आई जस्ट वॉन्टेड टू मैंशन यू बिकॉज दिस इज अ बैकग्राउंड ऑफ जी एस टी सो आई वॉन्टेड टू मैंशन वॉट इज वैट ऑल्सो ओके सो वैट इज लेविड ऑन एनी प्रोडक्ट सोल्ड डायरेक्टली टू द कंज्यूमर एंड दीज आर द मूवेबल प्रोडक्ट्स मूवेबल प्रोडक्ट मीनिंग लाइक टी वी रेफ्रिजरेटर एनी एनी थिंग विच कैन बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड लाइक यू नो सो इट इज नॉट इट इज नॉट इम्पोज ऑन लैंड लैंड इज नॉट अ मूवेबल प्रोडक्ट इट कैन नॉट बी मूव इट इज नॉट इम्पोज ऑन हाउस house is not a movable product right so it is imposed on any movable product right like tv refrigerator mobile phones clothes anything now value added meaning what see whenever any one good is manufactured so it starts right from the raw material okay it starts from the raw material then this raw material is sold to the industry some manufacturing is done okay manufacturing is done then after this manufacturing maybe some further processing is done okay then after this processing it is sold to the wholesaler so wholesaler will do some advertisement and all and then finally retailer retailer will sell it in his shop or something like that so at every moment there is some value addition right so for example from raw material some manufacturing is done so value is added then from well manufacturing some processing is done right for more storage uh, life and all those things so some value is added then it is sold to the wholesaler now wholesaler is storing it it is uh, the wholesaler is kind of uh, you know advertising for it so some value is added then finally it is given to the retailer retailer is uh, having his shop he is having his uh, you know uh, uh, that particular shop there are lights there are ac so pe pe people can directly go and purchase things from there so he is also providing some kind of service so he is also adding value okay so this is a tax on value addition so at every step whatever is the value added by every uh you know stakeholder here the tax is imposed on that particular activity and it can be done only on the movable product only the movable product can move in this fashion right so that is why it is a tax which is uh, which is sold or directly to the customer so here finally the customer will pay the vat 
now there are two types of this uh, you know there were previously two types one is central sales tax okay and state central sales tax so basically this is by the state government and this is by the central government central sales tax was a uh, tax which was imposed on interstate sale for example if the good is getting sold from maharashtra to uh, gujarat okay so uh, in this case uh, the the central sales tax will, will be imposed by the central government and uh, this tax uh, is a kind of dest uh, origin based tax so wherever uh, you know this sale happens so for example the sale is happening in maharashtra so the tax will be paid in maharashtra okay so that is a kind of system that is that was there in this uh, sales tax service tax service tax is imposed on sale of services so here the vat is only on the movable products meaning goods whereas service tax is on the sale of services right like hoteling service accommodation services transportation services different kind of services again service tax is uh, subsumed under gst with effect from 1st july 2017 we will see this in detail later on now let us look at the fourth kind of uh, indirect tax which is the stamp duty okay stamp duty is on immovable property so just like i have told you it is on house it is on land right it is on apartments any property which is immovable which cannot be moved from one place to the another land house apartments etc so stamp duty is imposed by the it is charged by the state government we pay the stamp duty to the state government different states have different rates of stamp duty so what is the meaning of stamp duty for example there is this one person he sells his lands to the person two okay he sells his land to the person two uh, for example he sells five acres of land okay he sells five acres of land and the cost of this five acre of land the rate of the rate at which he sells is that he is selling at 10 lakh rupees per acre for example he is selling at 10 lakh rupees per acre so the total cost the total price he will receive will be 50 lakhs so the stamp duty will be paid on the total cost so for example the stamp duty is 7 percent okay so he will pay 7 percent on the total transaction cost of this so 7 percent will be paid as the stamp duty on 50 lakhs so this is how the stamp duty works because he has to register so when this sale happens right there will be a registration of this sale it is known as sale deed registration of sale deed right sale deed meaning what it is in that it is written that person one is selling his five acre of land to person two on this this date there are witnesses and so many different things so it becomes a sale deed it is written on a stamp paper on a government stamp paper and and the registration happens so these are also known as registration duties okay stamp duties are also known as registration duties and it is paid to the state government now let us come and see the next kind of indirect tax which is known as the entertainment tax again entertainment tax is subsumed under gst from july 2017 uh, but just for the sake of uh, you know learning we will uh, we will study what is entertainment tax entertainment tax is imposed on any product or service related to entertainment okay it is it can be goods or service but it has to be related to entertainment now what is entertainment gaming okay video games video game parlors right game centers sports activities sport activities also considered to be entertainment movies you go to theaters you watch movies that is also entertainment amusement parks etc so entertainment tax is imposed on any activity any product which is related to entertainment and it is also levied by the state government again this is levied by respective state governments there are different rates for different different uh, governments different states but now it is subsumed under gst already now let us finally study the gst what is gst in this particular video will i will just introduce you what is gst in the following videos we will study gst in more detail now gst the full form is goods and services tax okay the name is simple it is goods and services tax meaning that it is imposed on both goods as well as services it has subsumed a lot of union and state taxes see subsumed meaning what what is the meaning of subsumed subsumed meaning to to take into it okay apne andar sama lena okay sama lena in hindi that is known as subsumed so gst has kind of subsumed a lot of uh, state and central taxes into it meaning what see there is a river flowing 
okay the river when it's meet the ocean okay it becomes one with the ocean so here the river gets subsumed into ocean that is the meaning of it so gst is a kind of ocean and these are the different taxes which i have now finally become a part of the uh, ocean of the gst so now they they no longer exist here the river does not exist here only ocean exists so only gst will exist and this will not exist or all, all the taxes which are subsumed will no longer exist only the gst will exist now what are the different state taxes that have been subsumed under gst so the first one is state vat whatever the value added tax which was imposed by the state government which we have seen uh, above it is on it is subsumed under gst then sales tax okay then uh, state sales tax that has been subsumed under uh, gst entertainment tax octroi tax octroi tax is basically uh, a, a tax uh, which is imposed uh, on transportation of uh, of goods then luxury tax this was another kind of tax which was imposed by the state governments purchase tax tra taxes on gambling etc so there are so many different taxes by the state governments uh, which have been subsumed under gst with effect from 1st july 2017 okay this you have to keep in mind this is not an exhaustive list ye pura list nahi hai isme aur bhi kai sare naam hai 500 naam hai but just for the sake of you know giving you example i have mentioned a few names here similarly for the central government what are the different taxes which are which are subsumed under gst then uh, you know it is a central excise tax the, which we have seen on manufacturing right union excise duties so these have been subsumed but not on all products okay so on some of the products still there is excise duty so not on all products it has been uh, you know subsumed only on on a majority of products then uh, additional excise okay then there on some products there was some additional excise duty also which was imposed that has also been subsumed then service tax of the central government has been subsumed then uh, you know uh, central sales tax it has been subsumed uh, then th these are the two uh, other names so i'll explain to you what are these one is special additional duty uh, of customs okay so basically uh, custom duties are still there uh in our country custom duties are still there uh but there are some products on which a special additional duty was imposed for different reasons so those have been subsumed under gst now so they are no longer imposed normal custom duties are imposed but these are not imposed and then there is additional term which is known as uh, additional customs again cvd countervailing duties now what is the meaning of countervailing duties countervailing duties basically are the duties which are imposed to offset the export subsidies of other countries dumping so this is a kind of anti dumping duty only but uh, you know here the name is countervailing duties countervail meaning to uh, you know you know to to basically uh, compensate to basically uh, make for something like for example china so china is giving export subsidies to its own manufacturers export subsidies uh, giving meaning what china is paying subsidies to its manufacturers for exporting for selling goods to say india okay so china bolta hai ki aap export karo india mein hum aapko subsidy denge to unka price automatically low ho raha hai right the, the, their export price is getting lower now in order for in order to protect our indian manufacturers of the same goods india will impose the cvd the countervailing duties uh so uh, it is the same concept as anti dumping duty okay countervailing duties is an example of anti dumping duty but it is done to offset the export duties see i'll show you anti dumping duties is a broader term in this there is a countervailing duty countervailing duty is only to countervail is only to compensate to oppose the export subsidy of other countries okay so the prices of goods of china or other country can be low for various reasons it can be because of export subsidies it can be because of different manufacturing subsidies right it can be because of say free electricity it can be because of free land anything so there can be multiple reasons because of which the chinese products are cheap so only when the reason is export subsidies it is known as countervailing duties and for other reasons it is known as a broad term anti dumping duty so countervailing duty is also a kind of anti dumping duty uh, i hope you have understood we will discuss gst in more detail in the next videos thank you